What's up YouTube? Welcome back to today's show. Today we're going to talk about a pusher fan. Now, for those who don't know, a pusher fan is that particular unit right there on the back of a boat. Not to be confused with an airboat. Now, an airboat would mean that that motor would be static. But a pusher fan is able to articulate 360 degrees. Now, it's also not to be confused with a flounder rig. In most cases, a flounder rig would be used as a same small power motor and a same small ultralight series prop. But in most cases, they either turn 180 degrees or they don't turn at all and they're operated with a rudder. So, now that that's out of the way, let's take a walk around this boat and uh, show you how things operate. So there's four or five main parts to a pusher fan. Um, number one being the engine. Okay, you have to have a horizontal shaft engine. Most of us are running a Briggs or a Kohler or even a, a Predator engine. Okay, typically between 20 and 40 horsepower. Some of us are outside that scope, but for the most part, that will include everybody. Next up is your belt drive reduction. You can see it well there. So the prop, let's go to the prop and we'll come back to the reduction. So this would be an ultra prop or a competition series prop, okay? One of the cheaper props on the market, but as you can see right there, maybe, it says 3000 RPM max, 3100 RPM max. So when we go back to the engine side of it, most of these power engines have a maximum RPM of 35, 3600 RPM. That's why you need the reduction. Without the reduction, you can only run that prop to say 3000 RPM and you have to be able to pitch it so the engine can't overpower the load. Make sense? So a belt drive reduction reduces the RPM of the prop to be able to give you a wider power band of the engine. These engines only will idle down to say 900 to 1100 RPM. So 900 on the low end, 3600 on the top end, that's like not very much of a window. 2700 RPM, something like that window. Versus when you're able to Put a reduction on there then you're able to rev the engine much higher the whole purpose of the reduction um, is to not exceed the maximum rating rpm of the prop however it also does a few other things by taking the load off of the engine shaft and putting a belt in it, now there is much less vibration in the whole thing because these V-twin motors aren't balanced, okay? So when you start mounting stuff out here on the end of them, they can create quite a bit of vibration. So since the engines aren't balanced, when you start bolting props and, and material to that shaft, uh, it can quickly create excessive vibration. Um, excessive vibration immediately? not really going to be an issue however over time um, it will put tension and stress so much stress on that crank that crank will become brittle and after you know two or three years of heavy abuse um, that engine crank can actually break off we've seen it happen so by putting a reduction on there you pretty much eliminate the amount of weight that is on that crankshaft and everything runs uh, a little smoother. You obviously have a bigger power band and it takes less vibration off of anything, extending the life. Now, on this particular style of prop, it takes what's known as a pitch block. This little triangle piece right here, there's actually one here and on the back side, there's another one here. They sandwich the prop together, but those will range anywhere from like 12 to 18 degrees. And depending on your engine's requirements will determine which degree pitch block you need. 
So, let's say we've got our engine running and we, we with the reduction on there um, and we started with a 15 degree pitch block. But our engine is only making, let's say, 3,000 RPMs before it chokes out. It doesn't have enough power to overcome the load. Well, in that scenario, we probably need to drop down a couple of degrees um, because every degree will get you about 300 RPM. So we drop from a 15 down to a 13, and that would take us from, you know, that 3000 up to about that 3500 RPM engine. You want that engine cranking as fast as possible. And the, the biggest uh, diameter that you can turn, you need to be within that 200 RPM window. On this engine right here, we've installed a, a small mini tack. Okay, that's imperative when you're setting one of these engines up. Not so much for any time after that or running later, but you need to know how your engine's set up. And then the few times that I've built one of these, I put it on there, set the engine up, and after everything was good, I took that off. So next up, let's look at steering. Well, let's look at the stand. The stand's very important. So this is a this is a well-built stand. Um, these carrier bearings or standoff bearings, I'm not for sure what they're called, guys, but um, they actually ride on the plate, okay? Um, this plate has been a little bit warped from heat, but uh, the whole purpose of that is to minimize stress on that main shaft. That main shaft uh, looks like on this particular build is probably inch and a quarter steel. Uh, I don't recommend that you do a tool steel, uh, but you want something uh, relatively firm, relatively stiff. Okay, um, Tool steel can become brittle over time, but the uh, the whole purpose of this bearing setup is to minimize that flex as much as possible um, even though that's inch and a quarter steel guys it will flex so down the main shaft this is what's known as a a drum style steering okay because the sprocket and chain that we have here is the exact same sprocket and chain that's on the front of the boat and the reason we use a chain um, and a sprocket it's just easier it's cleaner okay you can do a drum you can do a a solid cylinder down here um, and make it the same size as the one in the front and then just wrap the cable around it you know about three times and then go back out the other way um, but this is just kind of kind of the way a lot of guys tend to do it it's cheap it's easy to do um, and then through a series of pulleys okay lots of garage door parts on this style of build okay you'll come down and you'll have two turnbuckles here in the center of the boat you could probably get away with one but you would need a very large one so most guys do two um, it's just easier that way and then underneath pretty much the same setup okay nothing fancy once it's tuned properly, your turnstile, this is what's known as a turnstile, okay, will turn in the direction, all right, there's straight on. You can see our fan is straight on. If I want to turn the boat this way, then it turns the fan this way, all right? You're actually turning the turnstile the opposite way that you would be turning the fan but let's say we're going we're going to do it right there we're going to squeeze our throttle what that's going to do is take the front of the boat and push it that way so this is a very easy style to be able to drive anybody can get up here and say okay well there's a stump there i want to go that way so they can just turn it that way squeeze the throttle and it's going to turn the boat as it pushes 
the biggest thing that you need to know about pusher fans is every action deserves a reaction so if I come over here and I hold the throttle down for 10 seconds to counteract that I need to come back over here and hold the throttle down for three seconds all right to be able to run straight again to be able to counter that maneuver it's a pusher fan there's nothing else holding it and keeping it going straight other than your ability to counteract Wham! Wham! okay we're going straight and you can squeeze on it and go straight so a typical turnstile um you know th this is it's none of this is right or wrong you can do this however you want to um, when I got this turnstile, the handle was here and it was straight and it was only about this long. Um, so we lengthened it a little bit and turned it up just to make it a little er more ergonomical. Um, Teleflex 3300 throttle cable and then the entire ignition is wired right here. Now we just installed a electric choke all right, right here and that's going to allow this owner to choke that motor when it's cold um, if it's hard to start or or what have you he can choke it from right here um, make sure that you have a remote ignition system mounted on the front of your engine it's only a matter of time before that prop back there begins to get into vegetation so Speaking from experience, those aren't lawnmower blades. And even though at my local lake for a few months, I ran a landscaping service um, <laughs> in my spare time, um, sooner or later, you'll find something that that won't eat through. I actually had a piece of driftwood fall out of a overhanging limb on the river um, and did not turn the engine off. I seen it, I thought, eh, it'll be okay. It wasn't okay, folks. Um, the prop grenaded actually broke the five, uh, five sixteenths, uh, number five bolts, sheared them off at the hub, and that prop left that cage and ended up in the river. Actually got it hanging in the back of the shop in there. Yeah, so it's a serious piece of equipment and shouldn't be taken lightly. You can lose appendages. Um, you know, that can come out of the fan shroud on occasion. So just be careful. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like the fan content, well, comment down below because we're going to try to make more fan content here within the next few months because I've got a couple of them to build. So love y'all. Stay safe, shoot straight, shoot off, and don't forget to wear the PFDs. Tell everybody where you're going and kill them all.